The radio navigation aids enable the crew to navigate and monitor aircraft position. The A320 is equipped with two VORs, two DMEs, two ILSs, one or two ADFs, depending on the airplane. GPS-equipped aircraft have no ADFs. Each DME is in reality a five-channel time-sharing unit. One channel is associated with the VOR, one with the ILS, and the others are used for navigation. The FMGC can automatically tune the VOR, DME, and ILS for position updating and display purposes. Note that the ADF cannot be auto-tuned and is not used for navigation by the FMGC. The radio navigation itself is controlled by both FMGCs and can be monitored through MCDU pages. Either MCDU via the radio navigation page enables the crew to manually tune a specific nav aid, including the ADF. FMGC auto-tuning continues normally in the background. Note that when an ILS approach is selected, ILS-1 is displayed on PFD-1 and ND-2. ILS-2 is displayed on PFD-2 and ND-1. As you have seen in the EFIS chapter, the mode selector enables the pilot to select different ND modes to display flight plan and nav aids data. Plan mode is recommended when entering and checking the flight plan. However, nav aid data cannot be displayed in this mode. In all the other modes, ROSE ILS, ROSE VOR, ROSE NAV, and ARC, the nav aids can be displayed provided the ADF VOR selectors have been switched to VOR or ADF position. Here, as an example, the ROSE VOR mode is selected with ADF 1 and VOR 2. The ADF is shown as a green pointer, here ADF 1. VORs are white pointers. In this example, VOR2. Note also that the Receiver 1 data is displayed on the left side of the ND and the Receiver 2 data on the right side. The associated NAV8 data is displayed at the bottom of the ND in their respective colors and sides. Presented here are all the available modes for the navigation display. In the unlikely event of a double FMGC failure, the backup tuning mode provides radio navigation redundancy to the crew. The backup tuning mode is accessed via the radio management panels, RMP. For nav aid tuning, RMP1 standby nav keys are associated with VOR DME1 and ADF1, while RMP2 keys are associated with VOR DME2 and ADF2. Either RMP1 or 2 can tune the ILS. To access the backup tuning mode, the nav key has to be pressed. When the backup tuning mode is selected, that is the nav key illuminated, the control of the associated receivers is transferred to the RMP, and the nav aid tuning capability of both FMGCs is lost. This is indicated on the MCDU by a change to the radio navigation page, which shows only the titles in dull white. To return the control to the FMGC, the nav key has to be pressed again. Once backup tuning has been selected, the crew must select the desired type of nav aid, VOR, ILS, or ADF.
The DDRMI is on the main instrument panel. The DDRMI, Digital Distance and Radio Magnetic Indicator, displays raw data from ADF, VOR, and DME sources and presents a traditional radio magnetic indicator and bearing pointer presentation. Two bearing pointers are provided, each readily identifiable by its shape with its radio source. Each can display either VOR or ADF information, depending on selector position. Each pointer has an associated control knob. The left knob selects either VOR1 or ADF1. The right knob selects VOR2 or ADF2, if installed. Here, VOR1 and VOR2 are selected. The compass card displays the bearing information from ADARU-1. VOR-1 pointer and data are shown on the navigation display. Display VOR-2 data. The left side of the ND navigation display shows information from receiver 1 and the right side data from receiver 2. Note the symbol next to the VOR title. It is a reduced scale representation of the number 1 VOR single needle pointer. Since the VOR data and the pointer is displayed, both receivers consider the VOR signal as valid. On the second line, the VOR identifier appears. On the third line, the DME distance appears in green. To see the nav aids automatically tuned by the FMGC, we have to call the RADNAV radio navigation page. Call the RADNAV page. You can see on the radio navigation page that the FMGC has automatically tuned the VOR Lima Alpha Lima on both receivers. The identifiers are shown on the RADNAV page and on the bottom of the navigation display. Note that the identifiers on the radio navigation page are in small font. Now we will manually tune VOR number 2. The identifier Mike Echo Lima is already typed into the scratch pad. Insert it by selecting line key 1 right. The BOR identifier on the MCDU is in large font, indicating a manual selection. On the navigation display, this is confirmed by a tiny underlined M beside the VOR2 data location. Because a valid signal has not been received from the VOR, the associated data and pointer are not shown. The number two radio is now receiving a valid signal from the VOR. The associated pointer and data are displayed on the navigation display along with the M, again indicating that the VOR has been manually tuned. Since the VOR is not equipped with the DME, the DME indication is replaced by green dashes. Now select the ILS switch on the EFIS control panel. On the PFD, you can check the ILS identifier India Charlie Romeo Romeo and the frequency and the course. The course is also indicated on the navigation display. The check and the selection of the nav aids is now complete. The objective of the navigation accuracy check is to compare the raw data from the tuned nav aids with the corresponding flight management computed data. This check also has to be performed whenever the following cases occur. The progress page displays low accuracy. Nav accuracy downgrade message appears on the MCDU and on the ND prior to beginning a descent.
To perform this check, you have to use the selected nav aids and display them on the navigation display. We have set the ND range to 80. The BOR Sierra Papa Romeo has been manually tuned on receiver 1 and the BOR Papa Alpha Sierra on receiver 2. Note that the BOR Papa Alpha Sierra is the next two waypoint on the flight plan. There are two ways to do this check. The first method is to compare the two waypoint distance, which is flight management computed data, with the corresponding NAV and DME distance. The second method is to insert a BOR DME identifier in the bearing distance to field on the progress page and to compare the computed bearing distance with the raw data on the navigation display. We have typed the VOR DME identifier, Sierra Papa Romeo, in the scratch pad for you. Insert Sierra Papa Romeo in the bearing distance field. The progress page now displays the computed bearing and distance to the selected nav aid. The distances shown on the navigation display and on the progress page can be compared. Whatever method is used, if the error is less than one nautical mile, the check is positive and the flight management position is reliable. The SOP recommends to use the navigation display in ARC or NAV mode and manage lateral guidance. If the error is greater than one nautical mile, you can consider that the flight management position is not reliable. In such a case, the SOP requires you to use raw data for navigation and to monitor it.